What's up guys? Elliot Hulse here again, taking a walk through the park. I'm gonna give a quick shout out to my boy, Mickey Mouse. Actually, I wanna give a shout out to Frank Yang, who left this Mickey Mouse hat at Strength Camp a few weeks ago. He came down with several others for the Strength Camp Challenge, and we had a huge after party. The thing is with the after party is we chose a location where you can't wear hats. So my buddy Frank Yang had to leave his hat there and he left it with me. So here I am rocking the good old Mickey Mouse. I would never buy a hat like this for myself and normally wouldn't wear it. I even used to boycott Disney back in my uh, angry rebellious days. I'm okay with Mickey Mouse now though. So I'm rocking the hat. Thank you Frank Yang for keeping me looking fresh. So anyway, like I said, I'm taking a walk through the park because I wanted to share some ideas with you guys about being the king of fucking everything, right? I just listened to the song by Wiz Khalifa uh, called The King of Everything. He's talking about many things in the song, but, but the hook goes king of fucking everything. And uh, it made me think about some of the advice my dad gave me when I was younger. My dad is kind of hardcore, if you can imagine the way I am when I really start getting passionate about something on camera. My dad's like that about a lot of things, and I remember being a kid and he would get real fired up about certain things. And one thing he used to get real fired up about was being the fucking best. Be the best, my dad would say, man. We would play, uh, especially when it came to sports, you know, uh, academics wasn't top priority in my house. It was a priority, we had to go to college. But um, he got real excited when we did well in sports or fitness, um, things that he could personally relate to. My dad didn't even graduate from high school, so you know, he knew we needed to go to school, but he didn't really give a shit too much. I mean, if I got C's, it was good. But when it came to football, when it came to sports, when it came to training, when it came to my brother even playing the piano, my younger brother played the piano, I had another brother into martial arts, my sister even did track, so it didn't matter if it was art, music, whatever it is that we decided to, to engage in, he said, don't do it unless you're gonna be the best. Don't bother getting involved with something unless you're gonna be the fucking best, my dad would say. And you gotta be the best of the best. Made me proud one day when I took home the MVP uh, award at the All-Star football game my senior year. And he said to me, son, you're the best of the best. Little lessons right there for you guys, for you dads out there, for those of you who are, gonna, who are thinking about being dads. Uh, bestowing blessings like that, words of encouragement, empowerment, um, I really believe had a huge, has a huge impact to this day on, on the way I think about myself and the things I do and the, and the achievement and success that I have. My dad spoke blessings into my, into my heart and into my head. We fought a lot, because my dad's a hardcore dude and I was a hardcore kid and we bumped heads. But he spoke a lot of blessings. Both of my parents spoke a lot of blessings into us. And, uh, and my dad even goes on to describe how blessings were spoken into his heart by his grandmother. So uh, it's funny, I made a video the other day about generations of blessings and, uh, and how we could really leave a legacy by just speaking blessings into the hearts and minds of our young people, right? Just encouraging them to be the best. And when they are the best, acknowledging you're the best and you're the best of the best when you're the best of the best. No animosity, no hatred. A lot of dads is strange, a lot of parents is weird. Even, you know, moms with their daughters. Animosity for the beauty of the young girl or animosity for the virility and youthfulness of the young man. It's strange, it's very insidious, but take a look at how you speak to your children or take a look at how your parents spoke to you and plan for depends on who you are, depends on what your, what your core values are. A plan for creating a sustainable and beautiful and contributing legacy to the world. And if you have children, it begins with the way you speak to them. Anyway, that wasn't the point of this video. The point of the video was to show a contrast between what my father would say on one hand and some of the things he would say on the other hand. And uh, if you watch enough, enough of my videos, you know that I contradict myself. So. Watermelon don't bear pumpkin. My mom would say, watermelons don't bear pumpkin. So I'm a fucking watermelon and I'm gonna contradict myself just like my dad did. And uh, one of the things he would say is, you can't be everything. You could be anything, but you can't be everything. 
And when he would say to me, be the best, you gotta be number one, but you can't be everything, it almost sounded like, man, dude, what are you talking about? How am I gonna be the king of fucking everything? How am I gonna be the best? And you're telling me right now I can't do everything. And the audacity that I had as a youth, and I still carry with me today, but I also have a bit more grounding with regard to my audacity. That's why I make these videos to teach you young bucks out there how to buck up, knuckle up, and be a success like you see OG E. Hulse over here doing. Anyway, so my dad will contradict himself by saying, uh, can't be everything. And I would say, no doubt, Pops, I'm about to show you wrong. And one of the things that I committed to, one of the things I believe in my heart, one of the things that I live today is being the king of fucking everything that matters most to me. My dad's right. I can't be the top astronaut in the world and the top WWE wrestler, right? Like, you could be the king of one, but it's gonna be kinda hard to get your WWE wrestling in and be a <laughs> astrophysicist, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that we've gotta choose. We've gotta choose based on our core values. We've gotta choose on th based on the things that matter most to us. And if you're gonna be the king of fucking everything in your life, you gotta choose those handful of things that you're going to be the fucking king of, right? So the way I break it down and the way I teach it and the way I'm going to share it with you guys through the course of several videos coming up in the next few months uh, in a systematic way, I wanna show you how to break down the four core values. This is my method for keeping it tight, keeping it consistent, keeping it focused so you're not, you don't end up a big fucking daydreamer like a lot of dudes who have all these big hopes and dreams, but they're all imbalanced, they all contradict each other, and they really ultimately never get done. And I recognize that. A lot of addicted lovers out there. Beginning with your core, your values or the things that you want to be the king of, extend outward in four directions. How you doing, sir? And I often talk about king, warrior, magician, and lover, but those are just patterns of behavior, patterns of, of character. They're just, uh, they encompass various aspects of what we expect in our lives to be whole, right? And, and in the way I will share it with you right now, and the, and the invitation I have for you today, and what I would like for you to look at and think about with regard to you being the king of each of these areas is your health, Number one, in my opinion, of course, I've been a strength coach my whole life. I've been in sports my whole life. I realize if you don't take care of your fucking health, nothing else you do is going to yield its best fruit, right? You could, you could, you could hold it. You could hold off health for so long before it catches up on you. And you get these dudes who are like highly successful on Wall Street or whatever, you know, business, typical business types, hardcore warriors that end up looking like shit, feeling like shit, being overweight, eyes are bloodshot, never sleep, can't get their dick hard. Constipated. Nasty. I don't give a fuck how much money you have, what kind of car you drive. If you're constipating, your dick can't get hard, you got dandruff, your breath stinks, it's because you ain't taking care of yourself and you're not the king. Health is number one. Number two, I knew and you know, being king of, the, king of king of everything, Elliot Hulse, my health has to be right. I'm not the king of everything if my health is not right. My, my health is priority, number one. Then, family, dog, relationships, love. Not all you guys have family, but I knew that when, when, when my dad challenged me with, you can't be everything, one of the challenges was, oh, you wanna be a, you wanna be a business owner, you wanna be an entrepreneur, you wanna be a, a tough guy who can go out there and succeed and make a lot of money, but make sure that you take care of your family. Because if you take care of all that other shit and your family is, is not taken care of, then you're a loser, then you're a fake, you're fugazi, you're falling short. And you ain't making it happen like a true king of everything. So I knew right away that like, yo, if I'm gonna design this business lifestyle, right? Cause that, well, that's the third one we'll talk about in a minute. But if I was gonna design my lifestyle in general, let's begin with what we have, health, number one then I have to fit it around, I have to work it with, and I has to dance amongst things like family. You know, I, <laughs> pick out some bodybuilders you know, pick out some powerlifters you know, pick, a, pick out some, any obsessed athlete that you know, and look at their family. 
if they can balance their family, if their family is well taken care of, if their wife is satisfied and their children are respectful, then you, what you have on your hand, ladies and gentlemen, is the making of a king. Vocation, career, by the way, you know, I've spoken about these things with you guys in videos today, uh, in the past, but uh, today is such a beautiful day. I'm trying not to shake too much here. Today's such a beautiful day and I'm such a beautiful place. I figure I'd give you guys a recap, right? Vocation, career, your area of expertise or mastery. What is it that you're going to learn in a way that allows you to serve others, right? And how are you gonna monetize it? That's really important. We live in a day and age where it's very easy to monetize just your being, your character, you know, making these videos. I'm monetizing just being Elliot Hulse right now. The whole idea is you gotta be able to provide value. What kind of value are you creating uh, or giving people when you do create, right? When you do exercise your vocational skills and ability, who's benefiting from it? Because outside of the I, and if you notice, um, I'm following a pattern here. Those of you guys who are familiar with uh, the I, we, all, expansion of love. First heard it from David Dita, and uh, Paul Check quite often speaks about this I, we, all, love. The I meaning taking care of ourselves. The we meaning taking care of your tribe, your family. But the all can, is considered the world, right? Who are you serving with your vocation? And that's your vocation. Vocation coming from the word vocal or from the same root word as voice means, yo, what kind of song are you singing to the world? What, what are you speaking into the world? I spoke about speaking blessings into people. What are you speaking into the world? It doesn't have to be just speaking like I'm speaking, man. The dude that made this iPhone, Mr. Jobs, spoke a beautiful song through technology that gives me the opportunity to use this tool that he served the world with so that I can do my job better. What are you creating, right? Your creativity is associated with that aspect. And then finally, I, we, all, but above it is God. When I say God, I'm not referring to what most of you are probably thinking about with regard to uh, the Christian God or any Abrahamic God. You know? um, it's far more personal than the cold scientific approach most people take uh, or, or atheists take. It's very personal, it's very interpersonal, and it's very above and beyond time and space. When I refer to God, I'm talking about everything. I'm just talking about everything. God is not nowhere. I mean, there's nowhere that God isn't. It's a term, I understand, and it makes some of you guys uncomfortable. Substitute it for whatever you want. Odin, I don't give a fuck, Jesus, whatever name you want, I use God because it's simple for me. The universe. But the reason why it's important to have that as a fourth aspect, our spirituality, um, our self-transcendence, uh, is because when we put our lives into the perspective of eternity, meaning there was life before you and there's gonna be life after you, you begin to orient yourself in such a way that uh, your activities, your services, your words, even your thoughts, go far above and beyond just yourself and your family, right? If we just focus on ourselves, we just focus on our relationships with the people closest to us, we just focus on our, our careers, and forget that you're gonna die, and the activities that you're engaging in are going to send ripples out into the universe well after your death, right? It's gonna happen. How do you guys get uncomfortable with the word legacy, thinking that it has everything to do with money or Bob Marley? He's not the only legend, you're a legend right now too. You're already a legend because you've done things that transcend you. You've said things that transcend you. You know how I know you said things that transcend you? Because when you say, I love you to another person, they're just words, they're vibrations, but they touch that person's heart and they may transform that person, right? Speaking about my dad earlier and about the blessings that he says his grandmother spoke into his heart the blessings he's spoken to my heart. My dad's legacy lives through me. My dad, you, you're looking at my dad right now, making this video. And it's funny because when, we, when I go to my mom's house, they joke, my mom and dad joke. It's like, are you talking just like your father? Well, because my, in, in a way, 
my dad's activities sent ripples out into the universe, right? Legacy through his son, through these videos, through his three, four children, through the cars he's fixed for people that didn't have transportation, right? That's a legacy. If you fix cars, right? Think about the car that you fixed for somebody. You're a mechanic. You fixed that car so that woman could go to her job so that she could put food on her table. You, that woman may put food on her table for a child who ultimately becomes somebody who discovers some technology to help people with heart disease, right? And then maybe my dad dies, but six years later after he dies, one of my children have heart disease. Now this is just coming full circle and I'm playing make-believe with you, but I want you to see how it works. One of my children have heart disease. My dad's well dead, gone. Don't even remember the bitch that he fixed the car for. Her daughter, who was supported by the woman, heals my son's heart because of the legacy my dad put forth in the good intentioned activities to serve the world that extend far beyond his life. It's like that for you too. And, it ha and, it, and it's like that for you in a positive and in a negative way, <clears throat> in a negative way. There are people that you treat poorly that might damage their character and they may feel like they may go home and kick their dog. All right, you see what I'm saying? Nothing that we do is separate from anybody else or any time else. We are all interconnected. We are all one. We are all unified. It's interpersonal. It's God, if you will. Living through human beings, living through nature, right? We can't fuck with nature without nature lashing back, right? We don't take good care of these trees. We suffer. We don't take care of our water, we suffer. So when you're gonna be the king of fucking everything, I'm talking about everything. Take responsibility for the trees, take responsibility for the water, right? You might not be able to do something about it, but take full responsibility for humanity, right? We, can li we like to point fingers at racists. We like to point fingers at war, war profiteers. We like to point fingers, point fingers at the left wing, at the right wing, at the Muslim, at the Christian. How about taking responsibility? How about taking accountability for the hatred in your own heart? How about the anger, frustration, fear in our own hearts? When we begin with ourselves, when we transform our own hearts, we have no choice. We don't even need to think about it. Other people are affected. You carry hate fear, anger, jealousy in your heart, you're gonna behave that way. And it's gonna spill over into other people and you contribute a less than strongest version of your legacy. So that's it, dudes. Once again, I'll give you guys a little spin because it's so damn beautiful where I'm at. And I wanna invite you to look forward to my new video series called King's Initiation, that's coming out pretty soon. And in those videos, I'm going to teach you actionable rituals that you can use on a daily basis, most of which shouldn't take longer than a few seconds or a few minutes, so that you can apply everything you've learned through this age of information, grounded in reality, and become, not get, not achieve, but become the strongest version of yourself. Done.